and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Potassium is one of the most important nutrients for all crops. But how much do you need? It's not just about pounds or parts per million. We're going to talk about how to pick the right level for your farm on today's show. We're also going to talk about soil compaction. And I get it. It's been a tough few years here farming with either too wet or too hot and dry. And we've got compaction issues out in a lot of fields. We'll talk about how to solve those problems right now so next year's crop can be successful. Coming up later in the show, we've got a tough to control weed of the week and an iron talk as well. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Stop losing money from your stored grain with the end zone fan control system from Farm Shop MFG. The end zone monitors outside conditions to run your fans so your grain naturally reaches ideal temperature and humidity. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com. Each week on our show, we do what we call Farm Basics in order to take a concept that we use on the farm or some practice we do on the farm and explain it to non-farmers out there. So whether you're a farmer or a non-farmer, you need to know about spray drift and spray volatility and the difference between the two. You know, we're in a great spot to talk about this brand because we have two wildly different crops right next to each other on either side of this grass strip that we're standing on. We've got corn on one side, we've got soybeans on the other, and obviously soybeans are a broadleaf crop corn is a grass crop, there are completely different herbicides that are going to get used to control weeds in each one. And if some of that grass herbicide drifts over into a grass crop, it could be a real problem. Okay, so let's define these two terms. Drift is when we're spraying and the spray physically moves because of the wind, most likely, over onto a non-target crop. What volatility is, is when you spray and the spray lands on the target crop, but then after that it volatilizes, it picks up, it goes up into the air with the vapors, and then it moves over. So the only products that we really worry much with volatility, uh, it's dicamba and it's 2,4-D, or at least the old 2,4-D. The new 2,4-D, called Enlist 1 or Freelix, we really don't worry about it. We don't have volatility issues. But the old 2,4-D, lots of volatility there. All dicambas, we worry about volatility. So spray drift, as a farmer, we feel like, hey, we can control that pretty well. If the wind is blowing toward the soybeans and I'm spraying corn, I know I can't spray. However, if I'm out spraying in the corn and the wind isn't blowing toward the soybeans, but my spray picks up later and moves after the wind shifts and now it moves over to the soybeans, I feel like as a farmer, I can't control that very well. So we don't like the products that have volatility risk, but again, most products, there is very little to no volatility risk. It's basically only old 2,4-D and any dicamba. So farmers can manage this a couple different ways. One, they can just choose the right product. Two, they can choose the right day to spray on. And if yep. they say, you know what, it's not windy in the morning, I'm gonna go ahead and spray. The wind's gonna pick up in the afternoon, I'll quit. As soon as that wind gets up over five miles an hour, it gets towards 10 miles an hour, they can avoid a lot of the problems. The other thing that farmers can do is say, well, you know, it's gonna be kind of borderline for wind. It's gonna be around 10 mile an hour wind. So what I'm gonna do is add something to the spray tank to make those droplets a little bit bigger, a little heavier, so they fall. So they aren't small and fine and can blow easy. Those products are called drift retardants. And farmers have a number of different ones they can choose from depending on which products they're going to be spraying. When it comes to spray drift, if a farmer has a spray drift issue, and we've had that both directions, we've drifted on somebody and somebody else has drifted on us, those are very often problems where we lose a little bit of yield in a small area of the field or we cause yield loss. That's not good. But with the volatility thing, that can be over a much broader, much bigger area, but usually the yield loss is minimal to none. It's just with dicamba, this has really gotten news here in the last three years because of extend soybeans, people spraying dicamba later than normal, and a tiny little bit of dicamba volatilizing and moving, and it can cup soybean leaves that aren't tolerant to dicamba. Again, the good news is typically it's not even hurting yield, it's not a big deal, but 
we don't like it just because it gives all farmers a bad name. So what we encourage people to do to avoid the volatility thing is again, like Darren said, use the right product, spray in the right day. But the other thing is, if you've got a sensitive crop nearby, make sure the wind is going to be blowing away from the sensitive crop for two straight days. That way, all the volatility is going to be done. The wind always was blowing away from that sensitive crop, and you should be in good shape. Well, spray drift is a big issue, and it's something that farmers have to manage to make sure they don't have problems on their farm. And another thing that they may be out spraying for that they also have to manage is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? Pentair Hypro 3D nozzles are your premier choice for fungicide applications. Syngenta fungicide application field trials have shown Hypro 3D nozzles provide a yield advantage of up to 10% over other nozzles, maximizing the return on your fungicide investment. Learn more at pentair.com slash hypro. What I look for in a seed isn't just in the seed. It's people I trust who get me the solve without the cell. Who show me where their seed fits and even where it doesn't. Because the only innovation that matters is the one I need. With NK Seeds, progress means pushing my potential. And success matters. When you apply phosphate fertilizer, it binds to calcium in the soil, becoming calcium phosphate, essentially tooth enamel. How much of this tooth do you think will become available to your crop? NutriCharge doubles your phosphate availability by protecting it from calcium fixation. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy, all the way down to the last drop. AgroLiquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whenever you want, in your life and on your farm, Case IH AFS Connect gives you more control. Monitor your operation, manage your fleet and your farm data your way. Case IH, rethink productivity. My name is Amos Smith. I'm a fourth generation dairy farmer in Western New York. We considered strip till about three years ago. We usually have a wider harvest window because we're not compacting the soil and we're not uh, faced with too mellow a soil in the fall. The soils are a lot healthier. The machine, you know, it's, it's definitely rugged. It's a great system overall. It's a good fit for our operation. When it comes to potassium, you absolutely have to look at parts per million on your soil test, but you also want to look at the base saturation test. So with parts per million, basically in a six inch soil test, you can simply multiply that number times two, and that'll tell you how many pounds per acre you have in the soil. And that's good to know. You know how much your crop is going to use versus how much is in the soil. That stuff is important. But number two, you also want to see what's your ratio of potassium to other nutrients in the soil. What's commonly happened in our area is we have so much calcium and so much magnesium that it limits the uptake of potassium unless we get the right ratio of potassium in the soil. In order to find out what the right ratio is, you just simply run a base saturation test. Very simple, costs almost nothing extra on your soil test. And what we are typically talking about is 4% to 8% base saturation K. So get the parts per million right, and then get your base saturation right, and you should be in good shape for having ample potassium throughout the season for any crop. Now that sounds really easy, and I do agree with Brian. It's nice to have a number to try to manage off of. But there are some other situations that come up around the country. For one, I talk to livestock producers that say, you know, I've got this field and it's right by my livestock barn and I'm applying quite a bit of manure out there. My base saturation K may be at 9 or 10%, at least at the start of the year, till my crop draws things down. 
The other thing that I hear from farmers is I've got light soil and I just can't get a whole lot of potassium out in my soil to hold and so I've got to apply even more than that to start the year off because my crop's going to draw it down quickly. All right, let's answer both of those things. If your base saturation K gets very high and I'm talking probably above 12 or 15, now that could potentially cause a problem with some other nutrients in the plant because again, this base saturation test, it's a balance of nutrients in the soil. We want to have a good balance. You start getting a whole lot above 8%, you're going to cause problems. At 10 in advance of the season, am I worried about it? No, I'm not. In terms of the light soil, let's say you have lots of rainfall and you have very light soil, you may need to spoon feed that potassium out there. We don't typically talk about that because it takes a lot for potassium to leach. It's fairly immobile in most soils, but in super sandy ground with lots and lots of rain and irrigation, we'd probably suggest at least one in-season application of potassium. So that will solve both the high and the sandy situations Darren talked about. Now on your farm, you may be saying, you know, I had some issues out in my field this year. How do I know if they're related to potassium? One of the things that we see commonly being a problem, when we look at corn, if we have issues with stock quality, if we have issues with standability, and if you notice on your soil test, hey, I am short. I'm below 4% at base saturation K. I'm below 150 50 parts per million on my soil test for potassium. Those are some triggers to me that we need to improve those things. And I'll give you a story real quick. I had a chance back almost 20 years ago now to go visit Francis Childs, who at the time was a world record corn grower. And there was a hybrid that was very popular across his home state of Iowa that year. And I saw it driving all the way through the state. In August, they had had some big winds and a lot of that hybrid had, had either tipped over or snapped. And they just had all kinds of stock quality problems with this hybrid. What happened to be Francis's favorite hybrid? And I said, Francis, uh, I'm just wondering what's going on. How come that hybrid stands for you better than other farmers? And he said, here's one of the things that I've noticed, that many farmers go off crop removal rates for potassium, and that's what they're encouraged to apply by their fertilizer dealer. Well, of course, many farmers are maybe not trusting of the fertilizer dealer, or maybe just a little chintzy, and they don't want to spend quite so much money. So the farmers will say, well, all right, he wants me to put on 100 pounds. I'll put on 70 or 80 pounds, and I should be good. So he said they're taking a crop removal rate, which is really a bare minimum to even think about, and then cutting that. He said, what I do is I look at what my total removal is, what I'm going to need for stover and everything for that plant to have a great root system, great stock, and stand up and hold that ear all the way till harvest. So he said, just look at the total number you need. Now, you don't have to apply the total number you need in most cases because your soil probably has some, but certainly if you're short, don't just look at crop removal add some extra there so you can have a good stock as well. All right, and again, what you're really after, yeah, you gotta have parts per million, but we want that potassium 4% to 8% on the base saturation test. This is even more important if you're in a dry area like we are, because here's what happens. When your plant can't bring in as much water as it normally would or should, that means there's going to be less potassium getting into the plant because potassium goes in with water. So in other words, you need the concentration to be higher in the soil. Now in our geography, we have heavy soil, the ground is frozen almost half the year, and we don't have a lot of rainfall. We're never losing potassium to leaching, never, ever ever, ever. It's not a concern at all. So here's the thing. You might say, well, Brian, you want me to put out all this extra potassium just to make sure my soil level is good. Yes, I do. And worst case scenario, if what I instruct you to do doesn't work for you, no big deal. Just the next year, don't put any potassium on and you've come out even. All I'm asking you to do is put the money out up front. So now your crop is in good shape for potassium all the way through. Here's the one piece of good news that I want to tell you today. Potassium's really, really inexpensive right now. Now's a good time to load up, even if it is three, four, 500 pounds of potassium per acre. We put on as much as 1,400 pounds of potassium per acre. Again, in heavy soil, where the ground's frozen half the year, like in our area, and without a lot of rain, your potassium is not going anywhere. It'll be there for the future. Potassium is certainly key to raising a good crop, and as we talked about, don't just look at parts per million, also look at base saturation. One other thing you wanna look at in your field is you wanna stop weeds that could be stealing that potassium away from your crop. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? Fun love. And then 
give it all away Across the country and across county lines, no two operations are alike. You make the right decisions for the right acres, and no decision is more important than what you choose to plant. Introducing Extend Flex Soybeans, Elite Genetics, now with the addition of glufosinate tolerance, giving you the yield you want with the choice you need. Extend Flex Soybeans. Success isn't just about maintaining your operation, how you make out for the season, or how much you can get from each acre. It's about doing precisely what needs to be done to feed your crop and grow your legacy. All the way down to the last drop. AgroLiquid Precision Crop Nutrition. Apply less, expect more. Find a retailer at agroliquid.com. Maintaining your crops is as important now as it's ever been. Howler, a revolutionary fungicide from AgBiome, can help. It provides long-lasting protection from a broad spectrum of foliar and soil diseases that affect crops. Howler is OMRI listed, has multiple modes of action, and has minimal pre-harvest and re-entry intervals. It's flexible, easy to use, and is available right now. Visit agbiome.com forward slash howler to learn more. Call it a day. One more post. One more bucket. There's always one more to be done. One more field. To be earned. To be found. For us, it always has been. And always will be. One more bushel. Compaction is something you can never eliminate on your farm, but you can certainly reduce it. So you already know many of the factors that it's going to take. Yes, you should probably lower your tire pressure or use tracks. Yes, you should stay out of the field as much as you can when the ground is wet. So you do those couple of things and that's gonna solve a lot of your problems. Certainly drain tile absolutely helps, but today we wanna to focus on maybe a couple other things that you haven't necessarily thought a lot about. The first is calcium. The second would be soil organic matter. Well, calcium, let's talk about that for a second because it's not just calcium, it's also magnesium. If you get that balance off a little bit, and you may have heard a lot about, well, you need this calcium to magnesium ratio in your soil. What I look at is base saturation. I'd like to see that calcium percentage in the 65 to 75 percent range. I'd like to see that magnesium base saturation percentage down in the 12 to 20 percent range. And honestly, we've got fairly heavy soil here. I'd like to see it down 12 to 14 percent on our particular farm. But when you get those things in line, what happens is calcium is a big molecule and calcium also helps your soil porosity. With magnesium, it's a very small molecule and it causes problems in your soil where they get tighter and they get stickier and they don't dry out as quick. And on our farm, what we've found over the years and on many other farms, the same thing, high magnesium percentage, low calcium percentage leads to a better chance that you're gonna have compacted areas out in your field, especially with that first pass through the field in the spring. The next thing is soil organic matter. Basically, the more organic matter you have in your soil, the more your soil kind of acts like a sponge. It can take water in and, and release water. It will not compact as easily if you have more organic matter. So ideally, I'd love to have 5%, maybe even 7% organic matter. But if you say, oh, I'm at 2%, Brian, I'm never gonna get to five. You know what? Even if you get to 3% and you're at two today, that's a 50% increase in soil organic matter. That means your chance for soil compaction is gonna go down a lot. The most common way that compaction is dealt with on farms is with tillage. So let's talk about this for just a little bit. Vary the tillage depth on your farm. This is a piece of advice that you'll hear and you may be wondering why. Well, if you're always tilling at six inches, what happens is you end up with a hard pan 
at six inches. And it may be nice and fluffy on top of the soil and easy to work with, but just do a little digging on your farm. And if I go on almost any farm right now, I can tell you, well, you're probably running your disc at this depth. You're probably running your field cultivator at this depth. Well, how do you know that? Because I can find those layers in your soil and you can too. So make sure you're varying things on your farm with how deep you're going. Then which tillage pass do you choose? Which tillage implement do you choose? We really like strip till. That's been nice. When we leave some undisturbed soil that stays a little firmer for us to drive on, that's great. And then we can do some deeper tillage. Maybe we go down six inches, 10 inches deep, depending on what we're dealing with in our soils, right where we're going to place our seed and place our fertility. That's been great. It allows our root system to go right Right down we don't have to worry about compaction in those zones the other thing that we may talk about is zone building where we're using a straight shank on a 30 inch spacing on our farm and we'll go out we only have to do this very infrequently on our farm but if we do have a big wide scale compaction issue doing some zone building with that straight shank has been important we're just cutting a slice down through that compacted zone and we can get down as deep as 20 inches with the machine we're using that's been nice on our farm then we leave undisturbed strips in between that every 30 inches i mentioned we'd have a shank we can drive through the field next spring no problem yet we've broken through that compacted zone and allowed our root system to get down once again, you're never going to eliminate compaction, but do the best on your farm you can to reduce it for higher yields and greater profits. Another thing you'll need if you want greater profits is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how, coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough, but we're tougher with unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is a climbing perennial weed that is unfortunately infesting millions of acres across the world. You've got to get this under control. It's kudzu. Well, it was originally brought into our country as an ornamental and also used for erosion control and as forage. So <laughs> yep. there were some positive uses for kudzu. The problem is it spreads really quickly and can be a big nuisance. All right, so how are you gonna stop this thing? The number one suggestion I've got where you can use it is Tordon, but Tordon will kill trees, so you can't use Tordon next to trees. There is Remedy Ultra. That doesn't have all the residual that Tordon does, yet it's very good on woody species like this kudzu. Also, there's Spike. You could certainly try Dicamba or 2,4-D at high rates on a regular basis. Roundup has some activity as well. Also stinger, Brian, that'd be another one. But yep. here again, you gotta watch out for desirable species of trees. And oftentimes you see this along shelter belts and you definitely don't wanna hurt those other trees. Yep, so the big thing with this kudzu is it spreads very quickly. And because it does climb and it gets all over the place, it's a major problem in the Southern United States where we don't have frost to kill things off in the winter, or at least slow down some of these weed species. So just make sure you're attacking kudzu in your operation before it takes over any areas you don't want it. It's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Who says harvest should be the only rewarding part of the season? Sure, ending a successful year of planning and planting is a very gratifying moment. But with the Bayer Plus Rewards program on your side, it doesn't have to be the only one. By helping you earn and redeem cash back on seed, herbicides, and other eligible products you use throughout the entire season, you can reap the benefits all year round. So contact your retailer to learn how to get more from your crops and put more in your wallet. Bayer Plus. Rewards are always in season.
As a global planner consultant, Yield Track caught my attention because it eliminated so many of the agronomic compromises that growers face. Yield Track is a partnership between Case IH and Orwood Sales, and since 2012, it has been the only planter designed around tracks as opposed to trying to figure out how to mount tracks to a planter. The results are a stronger, faster, and lighter machine that gives uniform seed depth placement while carrying more fertilizer and seed at a 14 PSI footprint or less, impacting yields 8 to 19 bushel per acre depending on the wetness of the planting season, with a greater response the wetter the spring. Contact Norwood Sales to learn more on using a yield track planter to improve your farm's profitability. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soils and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more at heftyseed.com slash naturals. Stop losing money from your stored grain with the end zone fan control system from Farm Shop MFG. Hot spots and moisture in your bin can cost you thousands in lost revenue. The end zone monitors outside conditions to run your fans exactly when you want them to, naturally bringing your grain to ideal temperature and humidity. Master bin management with the end zone. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whenever you want, in your life and on your farm, Case IH AFS Connect gives you more control. Monitor your operation, manage your fleet and your farm data. Your way. Case IH. Rethink productivity. A field cultivator is a critical tool on many farms. This fall, I've already seen some issues being created by field cultivators that I wanted to address as they could impact the success of next year's crop. It's the topic of today's Iron Talk. Worn shovels can be a big problem on field cultivators. In the rush to get things done this fall, maintenance and performance monitoring hasn't always gotten done. In some cases, tillage is where the help with the least experience is put to work on the farm. However, the job done with this tillage pass will impact your yields next spring. Here's what to watch for. Visibly worn shovels lead to streaks and overall poor results. The first place we generally see shovels wear out is right behind the wheels. If you catch it early, you can still move the shovels around on the machine to try to extend their life. One switch that we made on our farm that's really paying off this year is going to earth metal sweeps. We've seen much greater life in the field under normal conditions, but with the dry conditions in many areas this year, it should help even more. One other thing to consider is the flowability of corn stalks and other residue through your field cultivator. We're seeing a shift to wider shank spacing and wider sweeps to accommodate this. Just make sure the pattern still does a nice job with light tillage and the stirring and mixing of fertilizer and pre-emerge herbicides to allow maximum crop growth and weed control for your farm. Finally, one other tip that's made a difference for us on our farm is putting shank extensions on right behind the wheels so you don't have to run the entire machine deeper to wipe out wheel tracks. Get your field cultivator in top shape this fall so you can achieve your yields and herbicide performance that you desire next spring. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. 
That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to check out the Ag PhD magazine. It's called the Ag PhD Insider, and you can just go to agphdinsider.com to learn more. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Oh,